Hello everyone. So in today's session, I want to talk to you about how I get ready for a presentation on the financial model. And it is based on a blog post that I wrote like a couple of months ago. Um, and the topic was, is your financial model well equipped for negotiation? I'm going to put the link down below if you're interested to just read it and go through it. But today I'm basically going to take you through uh, the different tools and the different templates that I include in my models to make it easier when I'm presenting the model or when I'm running different scenarios live during a meeting. Okay, so let's say that, uh, you know, this is a financial model that I want to present during a meeting. So I know that, you know, if, if I am presenting the model for the first time, to some users or some of my clients, the first thing I need to do is to take them through the model mechanics. So we can, you know, we can just uh, go through one by one every sheet, but it's, it's a good practice to include a sheet within your model and you can call it guide or any other name that, you know, the user can understand that within this sheet, you are giving instructions on how the user can use this tool, this financial model. So for example, in this model, I have this sheet called guide. I start first with the color codes and I explain to them that throughout the model, these are the color codes that we use consistently. So wherever you see a um, light yellow shade cell with a blue font, as I see here in the example, um, this, is, this contains hard-coded inputs. This is the assumptions that is linked somewhere in the model and you can modify them as you find necessary. So that's the first thing and that's the most important thing. And then I will assure them that since this is standard model, I don't use any hard-coded figures anywhere else in the model other than what I call the input sheets, which I color-coded them also differently in blue shades. So this way I explain to them that you know, they can have some kind of assurance that the model is transparent and there are no hard-coded some figures hidden anywhere in the formula. So after I explain the color codes and I tell them that visually, you know, they can see, um, they can have an understanding about the worksheet structure. Uh, as you can see here, these two sheets are the blue ones which contains inputs. These two are the output sheets. And I have some other sheets, which are the calculation sheets that, you know, the user can go and audit. However, as the user, they only need to come and verify the assumptions, modify the assumptions as they find necessary, and then come to the summary sheet or in the financial statements and see the results. Okay, so I explain the color codes to them and then I take them through the model functionalities. If, if there are any macros that they need to run, I explain to them and I show them, you know, this is the button, wherever you see that there is this um, check in the model that says that something is wrong, it might be the case that you need to run the macro. So you just need to press this button. So I explain to them one by one, everything that they need to do to uh, make the model work. I explain to them about the worksheet structure, um, about the column structure in every worksheet in the model, that it's a unified uh, column structure. Anywhere in, the, in any of the calculation sheets, all the time series starts in the column J. Going forward, I have a dedicated column for the sum total. I have a dedicated column for units. So everything I explain to them using this sheet called guide. And here also I can explain one by one what each uh, worksheet um, contains within this workbook. And uh, as well as the macros and all the error checks that are included in the model. So after going through this uh, guide sheet and together we're taking them through the actual sheets, I have, you know, I can easily explain how the model mechanic works. So having this sheet within your model would, will help you during the meeting to kind of organize the topics and the model, for the things that you want to you know, tell the, your clients or the user of your model. 
After I told them the model mechanics, the most important thing, which are what, what are the inputs that goes into the model. So I go to this sheet called inputs. That's where all my inputs um, are kind of classified and presented. So that's, that's where I go one by one and I explain what, what are the assumptions in the model. And most probably during the meeting, somebody will come and say, oh, by the way, we don't agree with this assumption. You're assuming, for example, let's say that you are assuming 12 month construction. We think this is too optimistic. Maybe it takes 18 months. Okay. And you say, all right, I take note of that. And you come and present another scenario here. You know, these inputs are presented in form of scenario analysis. So it's going to make it easy. For example, you just uh, write working session and you put the date that you are presenting it. For example, I would just say September 2020, whatever the date is. And then I say, as I go on explaining the assumptions, if somebody comes and objects something, I can come and modify it here. For example, we talked about this 12 months. I can come and put it as 18 months. And, you know, after that, run the model using the modified assumptions uh, and see uh, what the results will be. So having uh, these uh, inputs presented in form of scenario analysis is a kind of a good way to kind of um, uh, kind of make it flexible during the session to kind of test the different um, different inputs and different scenarios. So after I went through all the assumptions during this, um, you know, back and forth um, question and answer on the assumptions, most probably people will question your references for, for some of these assumptions, right? They're going to say, by the way, where did you get the assumptions on your EPC? Where did you get the assumptions on your installed capacity on the technical assumptions? And you need to justify it. You cannot just say that for all of them, it's my internal assumption. You need to justify them. Of course, for some of them, you don't have it, depending on the stage of the project you are. Some of them, you don't have a justification. You just tell them that it is based on the previous project or it's just an internal assumptions. But um, for most of them, you need to have a kind of reliable source. And to make it easy, instead of just say, I, do, I don't remember it, but I would come back to you, you just include this sheet called references within your model. And for each and every input, you see these are actually linked to the input sheet. For each of them, you just put the reference. You know, for example, construction start date is an internal assumption. That's what we expect now to have as the um, start of the construction. Construction program is just the EPC offer. You know, for example, so for, for all of them, you just put where you could get the assumption from. If you have a file name, that's even better. You just say, this is the file name where I got it from. It's included in the um, shared drive, or you can just tell them that you will send it after the meeting. But it's a good way to kind of keep track and record basically all the references that goes into the model. It kind of also gives you a credibility and as well as it's going to make your life easier to explain where you got your assumptions from. So that's the um, second sheet that I uh, recommend that you put. We talked about the guide and the references are also a very good practice to include this sheet within your model. Um, the second one is the Q&A, you know, so um, I would really, uh, the third one actually. So as you go along explaining the model mechanics, explaining the inputs, there might be some question that you want to just uh, answer later or just you just want to keep track, you know. So, for example, uh, here, if somebody asks, you know, uh, about the construction program, you just say, just, you know, find, you know, discuss with technical advisor on construction program. So if that's something that they ask you to do, uh, then you just take a note here and I say, okay, during the meeting live, you say, okay, I took note of that. And after the meeting ends, you can send the uh, email to everyone with all the questions that, you know, has been raised during that meeting. So it's a good way to keep track of this Q&A within 
your model. So that's the third sheet that it's a very simple sheet, but it's very useful as well, especially as you know, progress, as you progress using this same model, you will see that you will have a lot of questions and a lot of answers. So next time if somebody asks you a question and you have already answered them previously, you can refer to this worksheet. Um, the other one that is very useful as well is called scenario output. This is something that I'm borrowing from Edward Bodmer. So you can just go to Edward Bodmer's website at edbodmer.com and download. It's called Scenario Output. I'm going to put the link down below, but it's basically from Edward. And um, I find it very useful. So what it does here, you just define the metrics that you want to keep track. And for example, during the meeting, as I said, people will start asking you the question. I say, OK, what are these? Um, what if we change these assumptions? You say, OK. First of all, you're going to keep track of, um, you're going to basically save the, um, uh, the base case, the base case that you started with. So you're just going to save it and you say, this is the base case results. Okay, so the base case, I have 168 million of total project costs. My IRR is 14% and I have a minimum I, uh, DSCR of 1.35. And then if you change the everything, you know, if you change the assumptions based on what you agreed on during the meeting, you say, OK, now based on these things that we discussed and you need to run a macro here, as you see, there is a fail. So you're going to run it. And uh, the problem is not coming from that. It's coming from some. It's not a mistake here. It's just that something is not working with your assumptions. OK, so there is some um, cash shortfall. So anyways, you want to say, OK, based on the assumptions that we came up with during this meeting, these are the, um, let's say, new base case. OK, so we have increased the project cost to 171. This has caused the um, shareholder return to go down to 13.6. And it has also reduced the minimum DSCR. And then as you go along, you can just test the different uh, scenarios and just show them and, you know, the comparison between the base case instead of just copy and pasting somewhere, creating a table. This very simple sheet and these two simple buttons will help you to have a more efficient run of different scenarios and comparing it, especially with the base case. Um, what else can we have? Of course, these are just the main building blocks of every model. The summary sheet should be like very, not very comprehensive, but should contain the main um, model um, key assumptions and the key results. So, for example, in a typical project finance, you definitely want to have the sources and uses of funds during construction. Then you want to have some metrics like the debt service cover ratios and the IRRs and a summary kind of financial statements. And some dynamic charts will also help. And I'm going to put some links down below for you to help you how to build the dynamic charts and how to create a kind of a um, useful dashboard template as well. So that's about it. Um, let me just take you, let me just go through the uh, blog post and see uh, whether we covered everything. I think, yes, we covered everything. So if you uh, like, you know, this kind of topics, just subscribe to my channel and um, I'm going to be more proactive and I'm going to post more videos and also definitely check the resources that I'm going to post down below. And if you have any feedback or any questions or any comments, just make sure that you write to me and um, see you next time.